here's the moon, and a billion meters would be to here. And let's let that, rep let that distance <coughs> represent one second of time, okay? One second. Now, on that scale, uh, a lipid molecule in a membrane right there would diffuse the entire length of a typical bacteria cell in about one second, which is really incredible. One phospholipid moves pretty nearly the whole distance in one second in a bacteria. And we're going to study diffusion and osmosis a little bit later here. The 1,500 nanometer long E. coli cell would be about 5.6 meters long on, on this scale uh, where I draw it like it is on this piece of paper. It would be five from me to the end of the room there. So things are diffusing incredibly fast, 1,001. It would go from one end of the cell to the other. On this scale, uh, one millisecond or a thousandth of a second would be 620 miles, which is about the length of California. And the acetylcholine receptor, which is a ligand-gated sodium ion channel in your nervous system, when it receives acetylcholine, like in the neuromuscular junction of your body, it clicks open and remains open for about a millisecond, during which about 20,000 sodium ions pass through it. 20,000 in one thousandth of a second. On that same scale, where a billion meters is one second, one meter would be what? Here's a person holding a meter stick. One meter would be one billionth of a second, obviously, or a nanosecond. And in a protein DNA interface, you know, remember how we talked about how switching, like Hox proteins, selector genes, sit down on DNA and act like switching devices? So they bind to the DNA double helix. And the interior. H2O molecules that hydrate one of those protein DNA interfaces, they're coming on and off, and they have residence times on the DNA of on the order of nanoseconds. So they'd be coming, see, on, off, on, off, on, off, about that fast, every billionth of a second. The side chain interactions between amino acids in a protein, like a Hox protein, or like Tin Man, or Eyeless, or Distalis, binding to DNA, acting as a switching device. The side chain interactions between the amino acids in the protein and the DNA in the what's called the Antennapedia homeo domain, they last up to 280 picoseconds. So if we take, to visualize picoseconds, if we take up, if we take the meter here, which is one nanosecond, take a tenth of it, blow it up to here, and then look at the literal millimeters on this page. These are actual millimeters. One millimeter on this scale would be one trillionth of a second. And then finally, the fast, oh, here's a little picture of what's going on. Can you hit that light, top right one? Yeah, thanks. So here's Protein in green, here's one of the amino acids hanging on, the amino acid asparagine. These are hydrogen bonds forming between the protein in green and one base pair, AT base pair of the DNA double helix. And we're talking about these interactions here coming and going every picosecond, every trillionth of a second. Just at normal temperature, like in a fruit fly. As our, these are going on right now as we speak in those fruit flies. Those bonds are connecting and breaking. Yeah, forming and breaking and forming and breaking. And lastly, in a carbon monoxide molecule, CO, two atoms vibrating, uh, that's about the fastest thing that happens in chemistry. Well, other, other than electronic transitions, electronic transitions can be even faster, but vibrations are really fast, and the atoms and the bonds in molecules vibrate on the order of 100 times per every picosecond. 100 times per every, what's pico mean again? 
trillionth pico means trillionth of a second. So things happen really fast in uh, water molecules make several collisions per picosecond at body temperature. All right, so that's just a little bit about how fast things happen. Yes? Um, I was going to ask you something about chemistry, I guess. Go ahead. Because uh, when, you, when you see color, it's something, it's something in the light um, hitting an object, and uh, it's basically an electron falling from a high energy state to something low, right? Yeah, all the colors in the world come from electrons either jumping or falling between allowed quantum mechanical energy levels. Okay. Yeah. So how long does that take? Oh, to make an electronic transition? Yeah. Do I know that? Uh, I don't have that number on the top of my head, but it'd be faster even than a vibrational mode, yeah. It's probably on the order of tenths of a picosecond. That's my guess. Tenths of trillionths of a second. Okay, next let's discuss size and scale in biology. So we're going to look, talk through this picture which is in the study packet. You can look at it later. Just look at mine now. Can you hit the upper left one? We'll turn, make this a little darker here. Okay, thanks. Now, I do have some slides here to show you. Let's uh, actually Well, okay, I'll show you the slides in a minute here. If you, somewhere here I have a transparency of this. It's in my bacteria folder. And then I'll show you a slide of it too. Bacteria. Okay, if you dip a sharp needle into a culture of a bacteria, and pull it out and look at it under a scanning electron microscope, it will look like this. So there's the sharp point of a hypodermic needle. Dip it in E. coli, which is a rod-shaped bacteria that we have growing in our intestine. Blow this part up, it looks like this. See the bacteria? On the sharp point of a hypodermic needle. And then if you blow up a few of them, they look like this. So these are rod-shaped bacteria. That's E. coli, Escherichia coli. You have more of those in your gut right now than all the humans that have ever lived. And Let's use that as a jumping off point to talk about how big things are. Got to have a good sense of how big things are in biology, or nothing's going to make any sense in biochemistry. So let's go through this picture. OK, size and scale in biology. Read this with me. Talk so you don't fall asleep. Here's a person, person holding, holding a sharp pen, pen, dip it in E. coli, blow it up, thousandfold. There's the. E. coli on the sharp point of a pin. How far across the pin? 30 micrometers. Read that. You could line up 20 E. coli cells end to end across the top of the pin. Going to take one E. coli cell, blow it up. What am I pointing at? Blow it up 50 fold. And now you see a single E. coli bacteria cell. How long is it? 1,500 nanometers. 1,500 nanometers long, billionths of a meter, 200 nanometers wide, roughly, has a flagella so it can swim. 
Now, inside a bacteria, you would have floating around in its cytoplasm many, many, I'm guessing, boy, in a bacteria, uh, probably be certainly many thousands of so-called ribosomes. Now, ribosomes are the enzymatic monsters that string amino acids together to make protein machines. It's got about, it's shown here, here's the ribosome. It's got about 50 proteins in itself, three big RNA molecules. It's a huge monster in molecular terms. So you'd have thousands of these things floating around inside the bacteria, and each ribosome would be actually, I think, uh, quite a bit smaller than that smallest dot that, see the little black dot I drew? It'd be smaller than that. Thank you. So, you could put about 60 ribosomes end to end across, along the bacteria. Actually, no, I take that back. Actually, it would be uh, 60, yeah, 60 of those. Those would fit. Sorry. I take that back. But they may be roughly the size of that black dot. So, take one ribosome now and blow it up a hundredfold, and now you see the ribosome. Okay, how long is the ribosome? 25 nanometers long. Here's one nanometer on this scale. See, one billionth of a meter. And everything in this picture here, everything inside this dotted line is on the same scale. So there's a ribosome. The ribosome is a protein-making machine inside cells. It is itself made of about 50 proteins, shown here, plus uh, three big, huge RNA molecules that coil up. Here we have what? Read it. A membrane with phospholipids. Remember, water-loving heads, oily tails. What's the width of a membrane? Six, six nanometers across. On this scale, the DNA double helix would look this big. On this scale, as drawn right here, not on the screen, but as drawn on this thing, or like in your study packet, what did I say? Where 10 base pairs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, one complete turn of the double helix has about 10, has 10.3 base pairs of DNA. Where t on this scale, where 10 base pairs from here to here occupy one and a half centimeters, the 4.7 million base pairs of an E. coli genome would, would be 4.4 miles long. So on this scale, that DNA right along here would be 4.4 miles long. And if you represent the DNA of a human with its 3 billion base pairs of DNA, it would be 2,800 miles to be from here to, what, Chicago or something like that, Chicago, I think. So DNA is incredibly long inside cells. Here I've drawn on the same scale a typical what? Hemoglobin. Protein. See, a typical protein using hemoglobin as an example. How big is a typical protein? 6.4 nanometers. 6.4 nanometers long. Proteins, as you know, are made of the smaller molecules called amino acids, strung together in long chains. Might, be, might have a thousand of these amino acids in one protein. And I drew, kind of got chopped up on this transparency, but I drew with the computer right there the amino acid tyrosine right here. And what's the width of a typical amino acid? 0.8 nanometer. You know, almost one nanometer. And I told you that. A typical small organic molecule, like a sugar molecule or an amino acid, is about one nanometer long. Yeah, that's what a nanometer is. A bit, right, a billionth of a meter. Nano means billion. So, um, the last thing I showed on this picture is a single water molecule. I know you can't see it from where you are, but I drew with the computer two hydrogens, 
H2O, little black oxygen atom there.